G'day, 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 g'day. This is an amplifier module out of a Mazda. Uh, a few Mazdas use the same, or at least the same looking module. Uh, identical body, identical connectors, but they change some of the pins around between about three different models that I've figured out so far, uh, or the information I can find online. Um, so you've got to be careful which one you're playing with because the uh, one of them has, I think this pin is your, or the one at the bottom, second one in, is your accessory to turn it on. And on another model it's the top right pin on this connector uh, from memory. So you got to know, have a, have a look at the circuit and, and figure it out and make sure you, you've got the right pin there. Um, but this is a model... A lot smaller model number than the last one I had. BBM two six six A twenty Bose audio amplifier. Uh, apparently it doesn't work. Um, so a few screws on the bottom. That plate comes off. And the board comes out, and see what we can see. So with the cover off, the board just lifts out, and. Uh, <laughs> Watch out for the old thermal paste. There's our three audio amplifier ICs. Um, and yeah, horrible white stuff everywhere. We'll clean that off before we carry on so we don't end up inadvertently touching it and getting it everywhere. So I only had a diagram of the pin connections for one particular model. And it didn't match the model that I had the first time. So how do I figure out which one's the accessory wire? Um, well, pretty much, as far as plus and minus goes, it's always the end to here. So we've got our input diode, and then uh, the other pin goes to ground. Um, and uh, is the input diode in series or in, across the... I can't remember if it's across it or in series, but that's that's basically the, the, the two there. Um, and uh, then... Having a look at the circuit and trying to figure out how it operates, um, the best place to go to for a wire that's probably turning things on is the most obvious um, voltage regulator, which is this one. This is an NCV8141. It's just marked as V8141. Uh, and this is a linear regulator made by ON Semiconductor. Um, and the, the pins on here, uh, left to right, V in, enable, reset, ground, delay, WDI, which I think is a watchdog input, perhaps? It's, a, yeah, I think it's watchdog uh, based. And V out is the last pin, 7. Uh, so... First thing is, is it working? So you take a voltage measurement with your 12 volts applied on the other pins and make sure you've got your V in. So you measure pin 1 and yep, that was 12 volts. Um, and you want to know if it's making power, so check your V out, pin 7. And of course it wasn't making any, any uh, wasn't, wasn't regulating, uh, it was a 5 volt regulator I believe. So we had nothing coming out the other end. So we then have to look, is the enable signal present? And pin 2 had uh, no voltage on it, so it was not being turned on. So trace that pin 2 and see where it goes. And you'll find that it comes out to his little transistor here. So you can see that it comes, there's actually a little trace comes out here to this transistor and we're looking at the base of that transistor comes across to a resistor which comes up to here uh, and there's also a through hole via here so start probing around and trying to find a connection around here that ends up back at one of these pins with our meter and continuity mode, with the audible beep, 
we are looking for a direct connection somewhere and we think we're headed over over around here so um, probing along if I was to put connection on on this down the bottom right here and then start probing around here now there's quite a bit of conformal coating on this one so you might have to scratch through it to get a connection so I don't have a connection there or there or there or there There we go. So we've found our connection in. So where we're probing is here. And that's where our, um, this is the via that our feed in comes from, from the pin. And it goes through, we've got a resistor to ground, we've got another resistor in series, another one in series. Uh, which comes down through a jumper which goes to the base of this transistor which then feeds our enable pin. There we go, proof of that. So that's how we know that the, the pin uh, that we were checking, because basically these all these pins along the back of the connector and you just run across them while probing the other end and just try and figure it out and eventually yeah you figure out which one you need to feed uh, 12 volts into and then we've got our like ground is it's always going to be it's a bit crusty there <laughs> there's there's negative and is it the top it's not the top one it's the one under it here we go. Now I had a beep on the top one because it was actually capacitors charging up, um, giving us a false reading. And also had the negative on it, which doesn't really help. So yeah, positive on top and ground underneath. There's a close up of our amplifier IC. So everything looks pretty normal in there. So let's stick some power on it and see what is going on. Is it even turning on? Or is there a different problem that might still be a problem in the vehicle? Because of course the head unit has to send uh, data to this to tell it what's going on. So this is how I've got it set up. I've got alligator clip into the negative pin on the bottom. We've got the positive uh, clipped onto the outside there, the top pin. I've got a little uh, probe connected to the top right pin of this connector, which is our identified uh, accessory in. And then the other end of that lead is here, so I'm just going to touch it onto the 12 volt uh, while we monitor what's going on and uh, see what the go is there. And the other end, I'm just going, is the, and that goes through to the other end, uh, which I'm just going to touch onto the 12 volt connection there, and uh, monitor what happens over here, where we expect it to come through. Does our regulator turn on? Do we get our 5 volts out? And where does it go from there? Can I use the ground around that hole in the board? It's not plated all the way through. It's not going to be very good. Let's just run a longer ground lead so I can reach over to where I'm probing. Now yeah, I'm just going to turn the current down to make sure that we don't have anything we shouldn't going on once I connect it. 
All right, so there's a momentary inrush as the large capacitors charge up, but that's to be expected. And if we crank our supply back up to allow for a uh, turn on, what is this idle at, about an amp or something? When it is running, the... Um, the amp chips do get quite warm even at idle so we want to know that we have our 12 volts coming in here and I will probe on and we do and we've actually got 700 milliamps being drawn so something's powering up so if we look over to the end of our regulator we should have our V out we just have to scratch through that conformal coding. And we'll see if we have 5 volts there. And we do. And I don't want to leave it on too long because it's not bolted to a heat sink, so that'll get quite warm. So then we wonder what else is going on in something like this and we find out that we have that little guy there who is a voltage regulator as well so that I see there which is a ST2L05 I think is the is the chip there let me just have a quick look on the Google 2L05 it's a dual voltage regulator so it's creating uh, anything from one and a half to uh, 3.3 volts so what the one regulator does 3.3 um, and it can be set to do anything from 1.5 to 3 um, well 1.5, 1.8, 2.5, 2.8 and 3 and then the other regulator is adjustable from 1.2 to V in. Okay, so we're expecting two more voltages. One's probably 3.3 and the other's going to be something else in the vicinity of that regulator. And what we can see around that area we've got uh, one trace to this capacitor We've got another trace to this capacitor. We've got another one to this capacitor. So we're probably going to have one in and two outs. That would be a pretty good guess, wouldn't it? So let's have a look there. Do we have our 5 volts in on this capacitor here? And we do. Do we have some kind of voltage out on this capacitor? And we've got just over two, three, no, it was three, yep, 3.3. And do we have a voltage on this cap at the bottom? And has my scope frozen? I think it did. Let me just try that again. Make sure we dig through that conformal coding. And we've got 1.8, it looks like. All right. So we know that that's all working. And there's definite heat coming off of the um, amplifier chips, which is bizarre, because that usually indicates everything's OK. Hmm. So, what else have we got over here? Let's have a look at the uh, microprocessor and see if there's any sort of signs of life as far as that's concerned. Uh, not that I know what to expect, but <laughs> you'd think that when it turns on, it may want to read out of the EEPROM here. We've got a little EEPROM and uh, the EEPROM connections are 
pin 5 is data and 6 is clock so we really should have something going on there um, if anything's happening it'll be happening on those pins so 5 is data and get a probe on there and we'll apply power no just a solid high voltage no activity going on there at all so then we wonder is this device getting a valid clock signal so we head on down to our crystal so we could probe those it's going to be quite a low signal so we'll turn the voltage down uh, and see if it's oscillating we should be able to get it off one leg of the crystal itself and if I hit the oh, get some power on the go and that's off the charts alright let's come back down a couple probably got a DC offset on it oh yeah that looks like it's oscillating which should be around 24 megahertz according to the top of it frequency is 25 megahertz that's close enough 24 and a half so that means our, our processor should be running so is it warm uh, yeah there's a little bit of warmth there but maybe it's um, again I don't know if it reads the EEPROM on startup or not but if it doesn't maybe it's in a, a reset state so we'll have a look at our data sheet for that and that's the ECB5637 So if we have a look at the data sheet, we have um, down the bottom pin 24 is a reset pin. Now is it an active low or high reset? I think usually they're all active low, aren't they, by default? So uh, we could search for reset. Reset. Um, see if we can oh yeah it says active low there's a line over the top of it um, during active low reset after active low reset all sorts of states there we go reset is an active low Schmidt trigger input so we need to see that being high if it's low we know this chip is not functioning all right let's probe the reset pin what do we say it was 24 26 25 24 which comes off oh we can use the debug to probe on all right let's go back where are you where are you looking at there we go so you can see pin 24 snakes its way through under here to our debug header so we can probe on that and see if it's in a reset state or not and we apply the power and we can see that it's not let me just get a secure power connection there oh, such a dodgy setup okay there we go okay fluctuating all over the place. I need a better connection just to make sure. Wow. It's all over the place. I am going to check it with the software disabled for a sec so that I can see a nice smooth image on my scope screen and I'll just wamp the time base back down to something a little more manageable and let's have a look at what's going on there with a rolling trace 
Wow. Okay, if only you could see what I'm seeing. We have a very, a very pulsed reset line. It is constantly being taken into reset. Why? Okay, I'll see if I can get that on screen for you. There we go. The reset line is being actively driven low, so it's constantly resetting this IC, whatever's going on, something's resetting it. I wonder if it could be in relation to the watchdog timer. We did mention that on the regulator, there's a watchdog timer pin. Okay, so every so frequently it's being reset. Now if we go to, there's our data sheet for the regulator watchdog. Let's see if it is watchdog. It's going to prove me wrong, isn't it? Pin 6. Definition of pin 6 is... Uh, CMOS compatible watchdog function monitors the falling edge of the incoming digital pulse train. So there needs to be just a constant digital pulse train from the micro to say that yes, I'm awake, I'm alive, I'm running. And if that stops because the micro's crashed for some reason or the program's frozen or something, then the regulator will automatically uh, trigger a reset. Here we go. So pin three, that's our reset line. Goes low whenever V out drops below four and a half percent. Or the watchdog signal falls below the watchdog threshold frequency. So let's have a look at what's happening on the watchdog pin. So we're looking for pin 6. One, two, three, four, five, six, the last pin, because we're a seven pin device. How about that? Get the goo off top of that. Get a good solid probe. Let's see if we have any signal train coming in here. No, it doesn't look like it. It's a solid high signal. There is no pulse train. Definitely nothing doing, so we're brain dead as far as the process is concerned. Let's have a look at the reset pin and see if that's um, pin 3. And is that triggering the same reset line that we saw before? Yeah, it is. <laughs> there it goes. So, we're currently getting no activity from our processor. And it's not even trying to read the uh, micro on startup, even though it's got a clock. So, either that chip is bad, or maybe we reflow it. It could just have a cold solder joint under one of its pins there. So I think we try that first. And unless I get some kind of a super smart alternative option. <laughs> Sorry, this chip's actually a, a DSP chip as well. The Cirrus Logic chip is a uh, is a codec, so that does a DAC processing, DAC and ADC processing. So I'm going around uh, each pin and working at a stupidly crooked angle but um, just gonna put some flux on the pins and we're just gonna hit them with some heat and get them liquid and just see mm. 
not adding any more solder just melting what's already there we don't want to cause a lot of bridges by adding solder just on the off chance that maybe maybe for some weird reason we've got a bad connection here but I don't think that's the case I think it's more more terminal than these terminals <laughs> yeah I scraped off most of the um, conformal coating first and might as well do the EEPROM I'm sure that has nothing to do with it looks fine as it is all of these uh, left pins aren't needed they're all tied to ground I guess is what they are because the top right we have our power in and then uh, without putting a probe on it I'm going to say that uh, without putting a probe on it I'm going to say this resistor bank uh, on the right will be going to uh, what three volts I think it was and on the and then it passes through resistors um, all yeah passes through to these pins um, just to hold the uh, the lines to three volts and the data is created by pulling the line low um, so it's just a pull up resistor bank there mm. Really not a lot going on. It's either reporting it's running or it's not. And at the moment we have a missing pulse, you could call it. Just reading through the data sheet, or well, the there's actually a whole 500 page manual on this IC um, and how to program it and you know interface with it and so on. And um, trying to find anything about the boot process and, and that but all I could see is that there is a uh, like a boot ROM within it that must do a basic has a basic command for to get the thing in a, in a fetch decode execute cycle um, it can have program memory on it as well so what I really don't know is does it does it read its instruction set from the EEPROM or is that just for storing some sort of settings but um, since this is the third one in as many not as many months <laughs> third one in a space of probably a month month and a half they're probably going to be quite a regular problem so I'm bound to get another one that is working or I can repair and then I can take more measurements and find out how a good one operates before I get the next one and then I know how better to fault find these things so let's see if we've if, if soldering those pins has made any difference just do a quick a quick um check for bridges pretty sure I don't have any bridges okay uh, it's working and now we're going to check for uh, should we check for EEPROM data first or our reset line let's check our reset I think it was pin 3 on the on the old uh, regulator here so we'll go straight for that and just see if that's continuously doing its thing ah uh, yep that's unfortunate so at the moment I think we've concluded that the um, processor is dead um, for whatever reason it's not uh, reading the EEPROM or 
See, I'm taking a gamble here. It may have code on board that we don't have access to. So I have ordered another of these uh, chips. Um, the only place I could find to buy them was on eBay. Uh, and yeah, we'll take a chance that it starts in some sort of default state where it gets its code from the EEPROM and then does its thing. Because, I mean, if that's not the case, then, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, um, we're never going to fix it. We're never going to get the code, uh, and I don't have the gear to program uh, a chip like that. So that's probably programmed through the JTAG or something. Another thought I had is, um, being automotive, uh, often uh, manufacturers will provide updates to their uh, different modules and, um, you know, like your ECM and your TCM and your BCM and all the other modules on the car, sat nav, whatever. And um, maybe there's a slim chance that this was receiving a uh, update and it may have crashed in a, uh, during the update um, in a way that uh, that caused it to uh, just just wipe its memory, wipe its program. Um, it's a bit of a long shot. I don't know if any updates would ever be released for the amplifier module, but anything's possible. It's a bit of a strange thing to have happen. So. Um, Join me for part two. I'm going to leave this here because it may help you guys diagnose uh, any ones that you get. Um, but uh, for now, um, I'll, I'll leave this up. And yeah, if there's a part two, it means I guess that the replacement chip was successful. But I uh, uh, hope you enjoyed the first part and trying to figure it out. And I hope you learned something.